Howdy, Crumbums! It's time once again for Canonically Crumb, the only show that explores the comics and characters of the Crummyverse. Wow. Episode 12. You know, it's been over a year since that first episode. Mr. Natural, Part 1. Pre-Zap, Mr. Natural. Although I did show it, I didn't mention one really obvious canonical appearance of Mr. Natural. That's on the cover of The Complete Crumb, Volume 4. You know, this book contains all of the earliest appearances of Mr. Natural, and it does something different from the subsequent volumes in the Complete Crumb series. Or at least it does more of it. Which is that Volume 4 includes many, many sketchbook comics, which otherwise were not really published anywhere. And that's because the earliest Mr. Natural strips, as well as other strips in the cosmic vein for which Crumb is probably best known, emerged from his sketchbooks in the post-LSD haze of that infamous trip that we talk about so often and which we'll no doubt continue to talk about for the rest of the series. So today we're looking at the rest of Mr. Natural's appearances in Crumb's Mr. 60s period before moving into the period of Happy Hippie Comics. That's right, today's episode is Mr. Natural Part 2, Early Zap, and Sundry. As always, we need to acknowledge that for our purposes, Robert Crumb's canon includes The Yum Yum Book, The Complete Crumb, The Weirdo Years, Zap, Hup, Mystic Funnies, and a bit of Dirty Laundry. As the title suggests, Today we're going to look at Mr. Natural's appearances from the first two issues of Zap, as well as a few other early appearances from the East Village Other. Our first comic is Mr. Natural and Death Valley, drawn in October of 1967. It was published in Zap number 0 in 1968, although later in 1968 than Zap number 1, which was drawn afterwards, but published first. As Crum writes it, in his own hand, in the R. Crumb Coffee Table Art Book, I drew one issue in October and one in November. They were 24 pages each. It went fast. I sent the artwork for the first one to Brian Zan and never heard from him again. Brian Zan was a publisher of Yarrow Stocks, or is it Yarrow Stocks? I don't think we ever resolved that. But it was an early Philadelphia-based underground newspaper credited as the first to publish the comics with an X of Robert Crumb. Although the incident has been somewhat mythologized, the prevailing interpretation is that shortly after receiving the artwork for what would become Zap Number Zero, Zan took off to India on some sort of spiritual journey, perhaps initiated by a Mr. Natural of his own. Without the artwork for the first book, Crumb published the pages from the second as Zap Number One in February of 1968, and we'll talk about that more later in the episode. Crumb continues. I couldn't track Zan down, but I remembered the Xeroxes I had sent to William Cole. I contacted him and requested the Xeroxes, which I had to doctor, and I had to redraw the cover. Here's the original cover for Zap Number One, which became Zap Number Zero, alongside the actual printed cover. You can see that the number is changed along with the price, which has jumped to 35 from 25 cents since Zap had hit the streets. And he's added the Apex Novelty logo, which was originally just a joke on the cover of Zap number one, because it became the name of Don Donahue's publishing company. So what happened to the original artwork? Well, according to Crum, 10 years later, my lawyer, Albert Morse, here's a drawing of him, got the original art back from Zan, but I only saw it briefly before it disappeared again. That comic has never yet been printed from the original artwork, so I guess it's a bit of a mystery still. Mr. Natural and Death Valley is not the most exciting Mr. Natural comic ever. In fact, we'll mostly focus on the opening title card, which takes up a full two-thirds of the first page. But what a panel! The title is in that crummy, Cooper-esque bubble font that he's so fond of. Mr. Natural is walking through the desert and thinking of food, specifically a roast chicken. After Keep on Truckin', this is possibly the most iconic crumb image. 
certainly it's the second most bootlegged image, often accompanied by the slogan, just passing through. It was widely available, most notably from the Roach Iron On t-shirt ads, which were basically in every comic book for the 20 years after this came out. The caption reads, The great man, an ex-taxi driver from Afghanistan, has been meditating in the desert for 40 days. How does he do it? This elaborates on some Mr. Natural lore, namely, that he retreats to the desert for long stretches to meditate, a pastime we'll see him return to again and again and again. As for being an ex-cab driver from Afghanistan, the fact that Crumb spells Afghanistan with a PH suggests that there might be more to this than its face value. I tend to read it as something of a shibboleth. In the bottom right, a lightning bolt embellished octagonal frame reads, Kids, be sure to eat only Mr. Natural brand foods and listen to him on WZAP Radio. When I first saw this years ago, I assumed that there was a San Francisco radio station actually doing a Mr. Natural program in the late 60s, and, you know, Mr. Natural food products being sold. I mean, it's not exactly an outrageous prospect or anything, but don't let the cover of this collection of the Brazilian anthology of international comics, Grilo, fool you. It's just a joke. It's a play on the integrated comic strip and radio dramas that were common in the 1940s. There's a more personal inside joke here. Returning to the coffee table art book and that post LSD haze that I mentioned earlier, and all those other times too. I was sitting around Marty Paul's house one day and the radio was playing this black instrumental jive Motown thing. When it was over, the announcer said, that was Mr. Natural. So I drew this little puny comic strip about a guru type with a beard telling this person who comes in asking, Mr. Natural, what should I do? Go polish your shoes, Bunky. You probably remember the later iteration of that micro-comic, which we looked at briefly in Mr. Natural Part 1. But in case you forgot, the punchline was that Mr. Natural meant polish the shoes of your soul. Since starting this series, my collection has expanded to include a complete set of Tashin's R. Crumb sketchbooks, and now we can actually look at the original, little puny, and might I mention non-canonical comic strip, which was the first appearance of Mr. Natural on page 210 of volume 1 of R. Crumb's sketchbook. I guess theoretically, it's possible that this drawing of a rather stern-looking Mr. Natural underneath the comic, accompanied by the possibly unrelated words, Boston Baked Baked, which appears on the same sketchbook page, could have come moments before the comic. But I'm inclined to believe that the comic came first, since the Natch doesn't even get his iconic robes in the comic until the final panel. I'd guess this is from March of 1966, since Three pages later, we get the Mr. Natural strip, which Fantagraphics would canonize as his first appearance in the Complete Crumb Volume 4. Apropos of the comic that we're talking about right now, on the following sketchbook page, we get a concept cover for a would-be series called Yawk. And you find a lot of these test titles, shall we call them, in the sketchbooks of our Crumb. This one depicts an early sketch of Mr. Natural dreaming of a roast chicken as he wanders the desert with the working title of Mr. Natural and his adventures in Death Valley. Which goes to show that not only was Mr. Natural in Death Valley from October of 1967, more than a year in the making, but the concept was established almost immediately after Crumb created the character. Basically the third or fourth time that he ever drew Mr. Natural. The rest of the comic is just your boilerplate Mr. Natural and Flaky Foon comic, a fact rendered plain as Pikestaff by the Spartan Desert background, which essentially gives you nothing to look at except Foot and Natural. You know, unless you're really into the sun. The same sun that Mr. Natural laments roasting under, but figures there's no way out of it. Or is there? Because from panel left squirts forth a geyser. Mr. Natural is momentarily refreshed, but this halcyon moment quickly gives way to annoyance 
as the laughter out of frame is revealed to be none other than that eternal irritant, Flaky Foot. Initially, Mr. Natural attempts to assuage Flaky by appealing to his egotistical desire for grandeur, promising that he'll be visited by seven dragons with seven tongues of fire. But that's not all. A virgin shall burst forth from the sky standing on a golden flaming chariot holding a snake in her right hand and a crescent moon in her left. And a pure white star shall descend upon Flaky from between her breasts, encircled by black-winged stallions with lightning bolts in their teeth. Meanwhile, a multitude of celestial voices will sing round him, and the earth shall smell of roses evermore. He's laying it on pretty thick there by the end, but Flaky, possibly on LSD, seems enraptured by the whole idea. But he snaps out of it quickly when he notices Mr. Natural sneaking off to soothe his headache, which goes by the name of Foont. Next, Flaky defaults to his typical paranoia mode, accusing Mr. Natural of working for Mr. Big. Mr. Natural attempts to ditch Flaky by sending him for hamburgers in a nearby town, which Flaky hadn't noticed before. But as he draws near the town, salivating at the thought of delicious hamburgers, it blinks out of existence. A mirage, perhaps, conjured in Flaky's mind by Mr. Natural's mysterious mental powers. Having had his fun with Foont, Natural decides to give him some actual good advice, mastery of self-control. He says, when you arise in the morning, you should do last night's dishes, then sing a simple melody, then you should call somebody up, not me, then go to the store and buy some asparagus. Then meet a new person, go home, take LSD, say a prayer, breathe ten times, stand on your head, set your watch, take a shit, pick your nose, squeeze a tit, and this is all really good advice, which Flaky finds too much to memorize. Natural, irritated that his wisdom is falling on deaf ears, shouts, Take it or leave it! Flaky storms off, calling Mr. Natural nuts. And as he's leaving, Natural calls to him, Hey, know what? But when Flaky looks back and asks, What? Mr. Natural just replies, that's what, and runs off laughing. The end. The childish guess what, that's what game, maybe it's a regional thing, or perhaps it evolved by the time I was a kid, but I learned it as guess what, chicken butt. Like I said, when we started this comic, this is basically as stereotypical a Mr. Natural and Flaky Foont comic as you can get, with its major contributions to Mr. Natural lore being the first of many, many trips he'll take to the desert. For our next comic, we need to return to Zap number one. Now, remember, that's not Zap number one that went missing and was later published as Zap number zero, which we were just looking at a comic from. Rather, it's Zap number two that was printed before number zero as number one in February of 1968. You got all that? Anyway, here you see Crumb and his then-wife Dana hawking Zap number one out of a pram on the corner of Haight-Ashbury, which is our second confusing and mythologized Crumb story of the episode, which we talked about at the beginning of Canonically Crumb episode number seven. Now before we get into the next comic, we need to take a gander at this iconic cover, which prominently features Mr. Natural. We don't need to cover every detail of this cover, because we're going to encounter it again and again in this series. But under the title, All New Zap Comics, we get the tagline, Zap Comics are Squinky Comics. I wanted to bring this up because I swear to God, I encountered some golden age funny animal comic book from the 1950s just a couple months back that actually had the word squinky on the cover. But for the life of me, I can't seem to find it and I must have saved it in some place inexplicable. So as soon as I find it again, I'll shab know it right into the next episode. Moving on, we see Mr. Natural sitting in a particularly crumb-esque automobile which reminds me a bit of Benny the Cab from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. You know, it's all in the eyes. But no doubt both are inspired by living cars from old cartoons like this one, Betty Boop in Ha Ha Ha, circa 1934. He's accompanied by Big Baby in his or her enfant terrible form, who we'll explore in great detail in future episodes. 
plus a couple of other kids, this disembodied set of eyes in the dark, and this woman with a flower pot on her head, who I always assumed was his aunt Yahusis, not to be confused with Miss Yehudi, but I don't think she's explicitly named anywhere. She exclaims to Mr. Natural, I wish somebody would tell me what the diddy wa diddy means. To which he replies, if you don't know by now, lady, don't mess with it. This is a reference to a blind Blake song from 1929 called Diddy Wa Diddy. Then I got put out of train cause I talk about Diddy Wa Diddy too much, Mr. Diddy Wa Diddy. Mr. Diddy Wa Diddy. I wish somebody would tell me what Diddy Wa Diddy means. And, according to Cassell's Dictionary of Slang, a variation of do wa diddy, a nonsense word substituted for a word one does not wish to use properly. We can see that the car is about to crash into an open manhole right in front of this guy asking, is this a system? And there are several anonymous sewer dwellers staring blankly at the oncoming car. Similar to Death Valley and Yawk, we can see an even earlier version of this concept in R. Crumb's Sketchbook Volume 1, in a sketch from March of 1966 with the title Sludge. Here, in a very similar car, although absent Mr. Natural, who had not yet even appeared in the sketchbooks, is about to crash into a similar hole, only this time it features a sign that reads, Danger! Men Lurking! And what do you know? Like Zap, Sludge Comics are also Squinky Comics. Inside Zap number one, as promised on the cover, a trust that's not always honored in the Crummyverse, we find Mr. Natural visits the city. Although this too is a fairly typical Foont Natural comic, it's nevertheless an appropriate companion piece to Death Valley, as now Mr. Natural is on Flaky's turf. The narration reads, Yes, he's back in town, just to see his old friends who are still around. Maybe he'll even drop in on you. It's not you, though. It's Flaky. He's dropping in on Flaky, who asks, I suppose you're wondering why I asked you to come over tonight. But Mr. Natural isn't, and he says, Not at all, my boy. You want to sit around and talk about your problems. We will proceed to fill thousands of dialogue balloons squabbling over your never-ending... Flaky, worked up into a snit already, indignantly asks, My never-ending what, wise guy? And Mr. Natural pivots, answering, Quest into the unknown! They sit down, and Mr. Natural asks Foont, Say, are you on acid again? Which, of course he is. Mr. Natural can always tell. As predicted, they talk about Foont's problems, which makes Flaky uncomfortable, since they mostly have to do with sex. Ultimately, Mr. Natural laments that you city people are all the same. But he has an idea. Natural has some relatives that own a big farm downstate. This is an interesting bit of Mr. Natural lore that, unfortunately, will not be explored here. But he has relatives. He offers Flaky to go stay with them, get some fresh air, and mingle with the good country folk. And get away from that, as he points to an incandescent light bulb, which I think we can take to represent a broader, artificial consumer lifestyle divorced from any kind of authentic folk culture. Food asks, stupidly, Hey, uh, do goats really eat tin cans? <coughs> the depth of Flaky's ignorance sends Mr. Natural on a tirade. Do goats really? You see? That's just the point. You degenerate. You don't know anything about the real world. Man, you never get out of your car. All you ever do is sit around here, listen to rock and roll music on the radio, and worrying about your balls. And then you want to know what the problem is? Christ almighty, he says before helping himself to the contents of Flaky's refrigerator. Foont takes offense to the presumptuousness of this, looking at the reader saying, he's the nerviest guy in the world. But Mr. Natural fobs him off saying, don't say foolish things you'll regret later, my bourgeois friend. You own nothing. None of it belongs to you. As he proceeds to loudly enjoy a Dagwood sandwich, they continue to fill dialogue balloons, concluding that the whole universe is insane. Though afterwards, Natural walks it back a bit, perhaps not wanting to send Foont on a bad trip with a head full of acid. After glancing at one of Flaky's books, 
entitled Shoe Stores of the World, that's a bit more of that mystic shoe symbolism which we discussed in part one, Mr. Natural expresses his sincere like for Flaky, a touching sentiment that we'll see again and again in the two characters' relationship. Foont is also touched by Natural's words, that is, until he adds, exasperating though. It's time for Mr. Natural to return to his desert, but before he goes, Flaky asks him, aren't you going to thank me for the sandwich? This indignity is a bridge too far for Mr. Natural, and he launches into another tirade. Thank you for the... Now that burns me up. Get this, mister. Just to get in here to see you, first I have to catch the bus from Death Valley, which means walking to the bus stop on the highway a good 20 miles. Then from Reno, I catch a train. When I get into town, I have to grab a cab out here, can't stand those city buses anymore, and come 45 floors up on the elevator. And now to get back, I have to do all this over again in reverse. And what's so special about you that I should go through so much trouble? And you're gonna begrudge me a goddamn sandwich? <laughs> you're too much. And he playfully slaps Foont on the back with a whap. On his way out the door, he calls back, See you down on the farm, sport. The end. This is probably my favorite of the comics we're gonna look at today, because I enjoy the constant emotional roller coaster that Natural keeps Foont on, made all the more hilarious by the knowledge that he's on acid the entire time. You know, that's a roller coaster I've been on. And that's all today for Zap. But before we go, as the title promises, we have some sundry to explore, which all appears in Volume 5 of The Complete Crumb, Happy Hippie Comics. Mr. Natural appears on the cover of this volume as well, only this time his beard doesn't cover his nameplate. These last few appearances that we're looking at are from the East Village Other, a New York-based bi-weekly underground newspaper which ran from 1965 to 1972. This first Mr. Natural cameo is alongside the old Pooparoo, whose origin we saw in part one of this series in a comic called Let's Get Out of Here, which I mistakenly said appeared in the collection Head Comics from 1968, but which actually appeared in a student newspaper from New York called Print Project America that I think only did one issue. Anyway, Poe Buddy's nerfing. I mean, Poe Buddy's nerfing. In this comic, the old pooperoo pauses to ponder, which evidently predates the publication of Zap number one by a few months, but nevertheless appears later in the canon, Old Poop has trouble remembering something that turns out to be, I wanna go home, which he sings at the front of a parade of Crummyverse characters, including Angel Food McSpade, Proof Rock Piggy, Fatback, Exactly, The Simp, The Snoid, Stinko the Clown, and of course, Mr. Natural. You probably recognize this scene from the regular intro to Canonically Crumb, and this panel is adapted from an earlier sketchbook drawing, which also features Mr. Natural. Next we get, don't think about it too much, because you're going to get there anyway, which is a sort of poster follow-up to the I Wanna Go Home panel, which also predates Zap number one. In it, we find many of the characters from I Wanna Go Home sitting around the old idiot box. Mr. Natural sits on the floor, uncharacteristically reading TV Guide, and saying, Tonight's big movie is The Great Indoors. It's all about how fate throws a bunch of people together in a waiting room. This ought to be good. Now, I did some research, and for the life of me, I can't find this film anywhere, nor a film which this is parodying. But it seems the joke is on me, as Flaky, smoking a joint and staring up at swirling fractals, exclaims, Har har, you're always making multi-sensory wisecracks, you old smart aleck. Apparently, the waiting room is where they all are, and perhaps it's a metaphor for our entire existence, where we're forced together by chance while we all wait for the cold, inevitable embrace of death. Or maybe Flaky's just stoned. This last comic of the day is a bit of an odd duck, and it seems to retread a lot of what we've looked at earlier in the episode. 
it actually came out after Zap number one, number zero, and also number two for that matter, though we won't be looking at that probably until Mr. Natural Part 4. Mr. Natural, the man from Afghanistan, this time spelt A-F-F-I-G and with no H, begins with the narration, He's smart, he's cool, he plays it to the hilt, and he knows what the diddy wa diddy means. Unlike your Aunt Yahusis, I suppose. <gasps> oh! To all this, Mr. Natural replies, Oh yes. We find the Natch in the middle of his Saturday night both, apparently contemplating future lecture campaigns. Verily, I say, relief is just a swallow away, and if that doesn't help, try advanced phlegm throwing. His clawfoot tub is hooked up to a rather elaborate system of shower heads, and he has a darling little toy ship in the steaming bath. On the floor is a copy of Head Comics, which could be the Viking Press book I mistakenly thought Let's Get Out of Here was published in. God, I'll never live that down. Or it could be a reference to several tabloid comics Crum made under the banner of Head. Unfortunately for Mr. Natural, he forgot to have his doorbell extracted before he started his soak. This time, it's Flaky dropping in on Mr. Natural. But no bother, because Natural simply slams the door in his face and returns to his tub for an ohm. Ever the irritant, Flaky scales 45 floors and comes in through the window. Incidentally, as we learned in Mr. Natural Visits the City, Flaky also lives on the 45th floor. Coincidence? Mr. Natural asks, how's everything up and back? To which Flaky answers, drugs, drugs, and more drugs. Mr. Natural comments that if he keeps scraping his skull down to the rind, he'll end up like the rest of them, referring to the hippie movement, which was in full swing by late 1968. He goes on to say that he's watching the noble experiment quite closely, referring to the radical use of drugs and alternative lifestyles within the emergent counterculture. They discuss Flaky's problems over bread and jelly this time, before Mr. Natural gets real and mentions his family problems. Such the family he's got. Not that we'll learn anything about them here either. This time it's Flaky who suggests leaving the city for a farm up north, which Mr. Natural thinks is a great idea, almost like he just came up with it in Zap number one. And he gives him his old camping gear and a bit of advice. Next time you're looking at something, try looking at the center. And he sends him on his way. Falling asleep in his chair, Mr. Natural says to himself, What this country needs is more people like that boy. People willing to take risks. After all, minds were made to be blown. And the comic ends with another fake ad for Mr. Natural on WZAP Radio. This is a strange reimagining of Mr. Natural Visits the City. My thought is that maybe Crumb initially had some sort of plan for Flaky in the country. And due to the whole Zap number one, number zero mix em up, Crumb fans at the time would have read Death Valley after Visits the City, and maybe also the Mr. Natural contributions from Zap number two, maybe even number three, before reading this one. And so perhaps Crumb wanted to reestablish that Flaky was heading to the farm. But spoiler alert for part four. I don't think Crumb really does anything with that plot, so who knows? There is one more East Village Other canonical comic before we get to the trilogy of Heaven, Hell, and Repentance that we'll look at in Mr. Natural Part 3, but it's a seminal Schumann the Human comic, and I think perhaps better left to an exploration of that character. So that's all for today, Crumbums. If you like this program, remember to hit like, Hit subscribe, be a ding dong daddy, and ding that bell. I've been your host, Kyle Bridget. You can find my links in the show description. And hey, check out Potter Zeebe, the comic book nerd cast that dares to ask, what, me worry? Where along with my co-idiot Patrick, we explore comics and culture, including Crumb, all through the lens of the Mad Magazine ethos. If you want to support this program and myself, You'll also find my Patreon and donation links in the show description as well. And hey, why not pick up the official Canonically Crumb t-shirt, available now in a variety of sizes and colors at my Tee Public store. Canonically Crumb will be back as weekly as possible with another deep dive into the Crummyverse. Thanks again, Crumbums, and keep it up.
You asked me to go out and shovel coal Just to give you money for your jelly roll Now you do it Oh, you do it. That's the only way to get it done.